So I was talking to somebody yesterday over on Instagram and we went down this whole like little rabbit hole of if network engineering is not necessarily a entry level role, could you provide somebody a syllabus who is looking to become a professional network engineer? And the whole idea here was, you know, talking about like these tech creators who go on the internet and tell you like you can become like a network administrator, a network engineer um, by taking the CCNA, like the CCNA is like your gateway. And yeah, like the CCNA is a great certification. It's like the gold standard for networking, understanding networking and concepts. I don't think a lot of organizations are just like hiring these people with just a CCNA and no experience to go and manage their, their infrastructure and their networks, right? So we went down this little um, rabbit hole and I was pretty much saying like, if you were trying to get into cybersecurity, you know, it led down this whole thing of like, if you're trying to get into cybersecurity, if you're trying to get into, um, if you're trying to get into networking, if you're trying to get into some areas of software development, if you're trying to get into cloud and cloud engineering, like there's a baseline fundamental understanding of networking concepts that you need to know. Even if you want nothing to do with networking, but if you're going to be working like in, let's say AWS, for example, like you are going to have to learn some of these concepts. And these concepts include things like um, security groups, right? Port numbers, ingress, egress, VPCs. You're going to have to learn about probably it depending, you know, depending on the organization that you work at and the organization's maturity, if it's, if it's size, if it's an early stage startup, late stage startup, if it's public company, like there's, it, it depends. But some of the, sometimes like as a developer, you even need to know like how to troubleshoot things like network access control lists or VPC peering configurations, right? Especially now that everything's becoming so blended together with tools like Terraform and, uh, and Pulumi and, cloud formation and bicep and all these all these tools that that help you know developers be a little bit more like networking and systems people and systems people to be a little bit more like developers you know not 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 entirely but a little bit by having to maintain configuration code inside of like your version control systems and so on and so forth so the whole idea went we, the whole rabbit hole we went down was like okay if this is if these roles are not necessarily entry level or they're not, uh, organizations are not hiring people with no experience and just certifications into these roles. Well, what should you be doing, right? And it had me thinking like, what, what, what somebody should be trying to do, in my opinion, is identifying the least, like the lowest barrier to entry when it comes to learning. A lot of people will just jump straight into the CCNA. And I think there's a lot of factors that you want to consider about this. Like, <clears throat> for example, you might want to think about who's hiring for what tech stacks in your area. Because what if nobody's hiring Cisco people in your area? Maybe, what if it's Juniper or Fortinet or whatever? Like, you might not want, the CCNA might not be applicable. Like, you'll earn, so overall, my, my, my general guidance is starting with the Network Plus as to getting baseline fundamental understanding of like some core networking concepts right but how do you get to the level of being able to take the network plus right with spending as little money as humanly possible well there's some virtualization tools out there there's like gns3 here's a, a packet tracer there's even like things like if you're on the a little bit more you know developer inclined or devops inclined you can build things like um Docker network, right? Where you can build like virtualized networks and then place your Docker t containers into specific networks depending on like your Docker compose files and so on and so forth. And I think what I'm trying to get at is like giving yourself a low barrier to entry to give yourself a taste of what some of the things networking consists of before spending any money. And then like if you, if you vibe with these types of concepts that you're learning about, like in your network plus as you're going down and as you're building these things in in software then you can go and buy like yourself a little four port eight port switch start visualizing network traffic with things like wireshark for example and then slowly start building your competencies that way rather than a lot of people just like like flat out from zero straight to going for ccna which i'm seeing a lot of people talking about in various comment sections like once i get my ccna i'm gonna get hired and i also want to say like 
I think system administration, systems administration roles, a lot of them, especially for like MSPs, managed service providers, a lot of them also have some like low voltage uh, capabilities with them, like running RJ45s into houses and, 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 and companies and then doing patch panels and patchwork and, uh, you know, finding out well, if there's a break in the line somewhere with some of your, some of the tooling. I, I haven't played with that stuff in a long time, but you get the idea. But anyways, yeah, that's kind of just like where, like I wanted to put my thoughts out on this. I think what I'm going to end up doing for these videos, there's a little bit more talking head. This is kind of what I'm used to. Um, especially on TikTok and Instagram. A lot of people just like really vibe with these these types of videos on there. So hopefully they come out over here. And then if you guys ask me questions in the comment sections, I'll, you know, I, I will answer your questions just like this. Um, and I'll talk about some of the projects that I have going on in my head too. For example, uh, I have, I'm working on three projects right now and I'm, they're all like in various phases. The first project is the Go-based port scanner. I got a really interesting comment from a person in, on YouTube yet, the other day asking like, hey, are you planning on doing UDP for this particular tool? And I said, yes, absolutely. Like that is on the backlog of things that I need to, to implement is, is UDP detections and, and, and checks inside this port scanner. Another thing that I'm pretty uh, interested in, I started last night was working on an internal cloud written in rust i think that's pretty cool um my first steps into that is i want to create a little api generator tool that will read in a file uh that is, consists of a json objects which define various api endpoints that i want to create and based on that generator it will create the endpoints on an http server so i could start playing around with you know creating back-end architectures locally, I think what I want to end up doing is getting like three or four different um, Mac Mini Pros when I get my bonus. Should be in a few months, in a month or so. Actually, it's already yeah, February. Yeah, I should be getting it at the end of the month, getting some M4 Pros and creating like an EKS cluster and then maybe even running some models locally. Let me know if you guys would be interested in seeing something like that. And then the last, the last project that I have going on is the EdgeGuard. EdgeGuard is a uh, is the distributed systems microservice uh, system that is using Doppler Secrets Manager as its authentication endpoint with uh, JW, JWT signing keys, and so yeah, like I think this these types of projects, you know, they have nothing to do with work. The tech stacks have nothing to do with work, but they're things that I'm interested in, and, and it's just like one of those ways that I keep myself like motivated to keep on learning, and I think everybody should be. You know, everybody who's in the in the tech space, like they need to figure out like what that means for them. If that is, if you're a networking person and you're trying to find out like, you know, the next coolest switch or hybrid, hyper converged architecture infrastructure type of thing, like let so be it. It maybe if you're a software developer, it's like the newest coolest you know React based framework or uh, Mojo. If you're trying to get, if you're gonna go learn Mojo, which is like the uh, the C variant, the C inspired variant of Python, which I, I'm hearing is supposed to be pretty cool, pretty performant as well. It's kind of uh, interesting. Like if that's you, if that's your jam, you know, I think everybody has to figure out what it is that keeps them going because like the mundaneness of using the same tools and the same frameworks at work can you know really kill you on the on the inside. So yeah, um, I hope this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about your tech career, this is how it is for me. Like, uh, I don't charge anybody anything. I don't, uh, I don't have a course to sell you. You know, and, and, and you know, before I before I let you guys go, like, I'll just throw this out here. Um, something that's been sitting on my mind for the past few weeks is like remote work. Now, I've been working remotely full time for forty hours a week for the past seven years. And I had there's some impact that is going on with within me myself that I'm starting to notice and I'm starting to attribute that to being isolated for so long. Like I'm less sociable. I'm less like it's more awkward when I'm interacting with people. And there's there's a bunch of things that remote work is great at, but it comes with consequences that I don't think I hear people talking about on the Internet nearly as much as I wish I did. 
Um, like I, and don't get me wrong, like I'll never go back into working into an office again uh, if I have the, the option, you know? But um, yeah, like I, I really wish I would have thought about this a lot more. And so yeah, I can expand on that idea a little bit more if you guys are interested. But anyways, yeah, I don't charge you guys for this. I don't charge you guys for my insights. I just, this is something I enjoy doing. Um, so yeah, give me a comment, like, subscribe, do all those things, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.